Yeah, I'm John Duvetter. I'm uh, at the North Central Research Center in Minot, and as we were putting together our thoughts of this program tonight, we uh, figured we better address the price outlook, the cost structure, and then pull together with some budgets. So we'll be a little out of order here, but Carl will fill in. Uh, each year, come this time of year, it's the kind of we're in the decision mode of what looks good, what will work, and every year has its own peculiarities. And earlier this summer, everybody kind of had the conventional wisdom that we might want to mute some of the mics at some of the other locations. Uh, the conventional wisdom was the calf prices are really high, and there'll be a lot less backgrounding as there might should be, because with those high prices, there won't be a lot of incentive or margin left to grow them, especially considering that the feed prices are high, as Tim has shown, record for corn for the year. But as we take a little closer look at that, and as Tim has alluded, maybe that's not the situation. Certainly calf prices are really high. Anybody who wants to sell their calves, get the risk off the table, put some cash in the bank, good for them. It'll be the highest price they've probably ever sold their calves for, and you can't knock them for doing that. But if you got a good stack of hay, and you're used to feeding calves, and you like to feed calves, and you're comfortable feeding calves, and that hay is not national average $200 a ton hay, it's North Dakota average at $53 a ton other hay, it makes quite a bit of a difference. As Tim showed us, we got rising future prices. We also know we got low operating interest rates. The southern boys don't, aren't fighting us for calves, and they're not going to glut our market when we background them, so that has some marketing implications. And probably also is, uh, if this herd's going to expand, maybe we want to have some inventory, and maybe some heifer inventory is all right to hold. So that's kind of how I see the situation for this year being different and optimistic. And I put some slides together really quickly today because I was fighting computer troubles, <laughs> and I might have made an error because I, I was more optimistic than I tend to be. <laughs> When you talk about background, of course, there's so many different things we're talking about. Some people have four weight calves. Some have six, seven weight calves. Some feed for 45 days just to get them preconditioned. Some feed them till grass. Some do heifers on hay alone. Some push them out at three, three and a half pound gain. Uh, different rates of gain, different lengths of feeding period, different market timings. Some people buy cattle and place them in commercial lots, custom feed them. For most people, backgrounding is doing something at home with your own calves. So there's a lots of different versions of this, and I hope that we can play with a few scenarios it touches with just a couple of them. I guess we all know that as you hold this, add additional costs and hold this inventory and value, there's risk. And one of the risks is, uh, you know, you can lose calves. And as we look at historic records of percent death loss in backgrounding operations, it really isn't very high. It's about 0.3 to 0.7 percent a year. So an individual guy can get a high risk stress set of calves. It can be much higher than that. But that is not with a good vaccination program, good receiving management, some stress management. That's not the huge risk. Poor performance. That's nah, never quite as good as we want. So I don't know why we didn't get two. We only got one six. Yeah. And that impacts you because then your conversion goes bad. And that's knowing what your feed is. Balancing your ration, adding the right supplements, doctoring it up, and I think we can get pretty predictable on performance other than some bitter cold period, some event that we have to probably recover from with some compensatory gain. The one that scares me to death and most people is the falling market. <clears throat> uh, this year we've got the outlook that we might have a rising market, so let's move right on. <laughs> If we look at historic returns from backgrounding, and this is from the adult farm and ranch management summarized over these last 10 years, uh, probably about 80, 90 operations in the state a year that had the good enterprise data to do this. There was a year back in 2007 where there was $10 head losses. The spread between when calves were valued in backgrounding and when they went out was over $21 spread. They dropped. If we drop 20 bucks a hundredweight, it's hard to make money backgrounding. Last year we had a rising market. Backgrounders did pretty darn good. If you look at that over the long haul, it's about $25. A 
We're going to start budgeting. We've got to kind of put a value on what we got to start with to know if we're going to add some value or make some money with it. So this is the same chart that Tim had, North Dakota price summary from last week. And I'll use some of those numbers as a guide as I do some budgeting. I threw the heifer prices kind of over on the side, and they don't match up line for line with weights, but those at the top are the light three and four weights, and those at the bottom are the 1,000 weight heifers. I think it's kind of interesting when they get 1,000 pounds and over, there's not much difference in their value. But back over there when they're 400 pounds, we're talking heifers at $1.41 and steers at $1.61. Nobody seems to get too excited about light heifers. They're really discounted. And so I bring that out just because if you got light heifers, maybe you don't want to give them away. Here's the actual heifer data where you can see the actual weight next to. There's got to be a little bit of an error on that. 450 a pound one. I think that was a typo. Second line down. In addition to getting a realistic idea of what they're worth, and these market reports can help you quite a bit, visiting with your neighbors, knowing what contracts they're going for, sitting in the sale barn a time or two, but then you also got to get some kind of indication of how you're going to value them when you build your budget going out. As Tim suggested, we got some real strong futures prices all the way increasing through March, all the way through next summer. They're a rising outlook. Uh, how close will our cash prices monitor those? Big question. Things will change. They won't stay the same, these prices. And there's sometimes a basis when we get up north and have some trucking differential and so forth that might be 4 or $5 dollars a hundred weight. In a budget, we got some costs. Our direct costs are those we spend just because the cap's there and we're taking care of it. Out of the $95 a head that was used last year as an average direct cost number in the adult farm management records, I added up feed was $77 of that. So feed's your main cost. You got a little veterinary, you got some fuel, some operating interest, maybe some marketing charges. Uh, those are kind of minor compared to the feed bill. Then you also have some overhead costs, and these on-farm backgrounders where they're trying to allocate some of these overhead costs are, I guess it might be a little bit of a challenge at time, to figure out how much the utility bill went to the calves, to the cows, to the crop drying, and so forth, giving up the insurance premiums, how much of your machinery cost or payment or depreciation is going against backgrounders, but that was at $11 in last year's summary. For my budgeting, I made a bunch of assumptions. I said the kind of feeds, we're going to keep it real simple. We got good hay, we got average hay, we got concentrates. Good hay is that stuff that's uh, early cut grass alfalfa, maybe some alfalfa, testing 58 TDN. Average price in North Dakota for alfalfa hay is 70 some dollars a ton. I put it in at 80. I put the other hay, 54 TDN at 60. And I said, corn at six bucks a bushel. Well, and Tim said it's not six, but maybe by the time you get it home and process it and mess around with it, it's six bucks. I got that at 215. And if you want to buy wheat mids or do something else or buy sprout pellets or buy gluten or distillers, it's all going to be comparatively priced to corn. So that's my concentrate number. Now, it would be nice, in some years we have abundance of dollar fifty wheat, two dollar corn because it's damaged. I haven't heard of anything other than some pigeon grassy screenings for 40 a ton. There's just not a lot of stuff surfacing yet. Maybe some green beans will or something. Then you got to know <clears throat> the kind of ration you're feeding based on kind of the gain and how rough it is and how concentrated it is, how much feed it takes to put on a pound of gain. This isn't a perfect chart, but I've got if you're only getting a pound and a half gain, you're probably converting at 13 or 4 to 1. Now, if you get these calves really smoking along at two and three quarters, it's probably seven and a half to one or could be slightly better than that even. And so I've just incrementally put some conversion numbers that I used when I made my budgets. Lot charges, charge you a dime if it was at home, that's your overhead cost per day, per calf. And if you go to somebody else to do the work, so that bottom return doesn't include labor and management, it just includes return on your equity, well, then you're going to pay someone 35 cents or more or less. 
interest at 6%, death loss at 1%, vet treatments 10 per head, and then I just lump marketing trucking, your beef commission, you're holding to market, your 2% sale fee at 25 bucks a head. Kept her kind of simple. Here's Steve, or Steve, here's Tim's uh, base budget he has on his website, his spreadsheet. Making $77, gaining 2.77, ration cost $168 a ton, they're converting it 7 to 3.3. Feed cost is 61 cents per pound to gain. Total cost to gain, just under 90. And the total amount you're going to spend per calf, not less his purchase cost, is $176. I said average is 25. Most years when you project them, you can wiggle the numbers to get 25, but you usually don't get 77. <laughs> what, what's your, uh, what was your buying price at? Uh, buying price is at 139 at 550 minus the shrink of where you're starting to put the game back after you get them hauled home. On 1-1, one, one, and that calf would go to town January 18th. The futures price is a buck 45 for that month, but Tim used that in his budget, and so I use that. And he said if we went to there, we would double that. Okay, that's kind of your traditional background. About two to three months in the lot, put on about 200 pounds. Use quite a bit of grain and some forage. Well, I already suggested that some of these light heifers might not be a bad thing to have around, especially if you got them and you don't want to give them away. So I put some 475 pound heifers in this budget and I valued them at $1.35 on the 1st of November. Now, you said, is that what they're going to sell for? 475 pounds for $1.35? Well, that's what was in that last market report. So if you sold them last week at one of those markets was reported, you probably got something like that. Next week it might be 10 under or 10 more, I don't know. And then I said, well, we're gonna feed them some of that $60 a ton hay, and we're gonna feed them some of that, little bit of that $215 concentrate. And they'll gain 1.6 on that a day. That ration is not 168, it's 115, because it's got a lot of you know, $60 a ton hay in it. They're gonna convert quite a bit poor at 13, and we're gonna sell them at $1.35 at 750 pounds next April. How'd that work out? $81. Will that stay that way? If feed stays that way and calves stay that way? Not for very long. So if you gotta lock some of these in, if you think you'll keep that picture to last longer than a blink. Put a lot more weight on them there. What's that? You could put more weight. I was trying to get them to a breeding weight on a lot of hay. But I mean, it was 475. We put on 275 pounds over, I don't know, 100 and some days. Another approach is, and this is an approach that people do with their own replacement efforts sometimes. They're a little bigger. These are sorted off for keepers, 550 pounds. We got the good hay set aside in a heifer haystack. So we're not going to feed them concentrate. We're going to feed them $80 a ton hay plus a little vitamin mineral salt, so their ration is only $85 a ton ration. But when we give them that good hay, about the best we can hope for is probably 1.2 pounds. And so to get them to weigh 750 pounds, we got to go clear out to June. Our cost of gain, feed cost of gain is a little higher. Our total cost of gain is a little higher because there's just not enough gain there relative to the maintenance cost. But we still project if we could sell them at $1.32 out there, 750 pounds, $56 profit. So I've got two scenarios with heifers that looks like you can make it work. One is using some grain and some poor hay, and one is maybe doing just very minimal feed input. But most people are more likely to concentrate their marketing and their feeding on the steer. So let's look at a few steer examples. I know everybody's calves weigh different and calve different times and wean different dates, but there's a lot of calves I've heard contracted around 620, 6 and a quarter. We got a lot of good growthy calves. So you got them 6 and a quarter calves. I'm hearing some bids in the $1.40 range on those. Some a little higher than done earlier. And if you look at that market report, Maybe that's just a tad high for what went through the market last week. 
Let's feed these good. These are the good calves. We're proud of them. We want to get them big quick like we normally do. We want them 850. And so uh, that's our target market weight. And so we got a $185 ton ration, 7.5 conversion. And we'll say there's no spread. This thing's flat. We sell them for the same price we could have sold them then, but now they're 200 pounds heavier. And we got a $93 margin right there. And that's feeding quite a bit of corn to keep them moving that fast. 69 cent feed cost of gain, kind of high, but we're putting on quite a bit of gain, quite a bit of weight, and we're, we're building a little margin in it. We don't have that much feed grain around, or we're going to ration it out, but we got more hay. We want to slow them up a little, feed a little more of our better hay. We could, and we had a little lighter calves. This might be a scenario. 550 pounds calves valued in at a buck fifty. Gain and a half pound less at two and a quarter per day on a ration that has a little poorer conversion, but a little lower cost per ton. Take them. 800 pounds because they're gaining slower. We want them out in April before we go farming. We need the money. Got to buy some expensive anhydrous. We'll sell them. Sell them at a buck 40. Futures at a buck 46 at that time. What's wrong? There's only 43 bucks in this one. Because you're paying wages on the lot charge. Right? right. In this one, I threw in a lot charge of 35 cents. And so. Somebody else is making 30 more dollars or close to $40 on this calf. And if you want to put your 10 cent in, then we can put it back over in the other column. Well, we can even slow these things up more. Uh, and we can keep them home, feed them more hay, and you see... We're still in a profitable margin, but we're starting to slide a little bit when we don't get some weight to more offset some of the maintenance cost. And we're getting way out here till June before we have something big enough to market if our target weights are up there. But being the futures price is holding, it's still a profitable scenario. Well, I said things won't stay the same. I mean, that, it can look good tonight, and it maybe didn't look good last week, and I don't know how it'll look tomorrow. Corn will go up, cattle will go down, feed will do something, futures will change. So if we're going to start protecting something, we probably better lock in the feed. Now, if this is a haystack and it's not very marketable other ways because you didn't net wrap it or square bale it or you can only sell it to your neighbor or feed it to your own cows, well, that, that's kind of firm. But some of the other deals, if you're buying the corn, now might not be a bad time to get some in the bin. Or on this market, can we afford to spend some money to protect that market? Well, this is the option prices to buy a put. It gives you the right to sell that futures contract. And a lot of these scenarios had a break even in the high 120, 130. And the cost to buy a dollar 32 is under two bucks. So we can certainly protect a break even without. A lot of money. Now, if we want to lock in the $1.46 or $1.48, we're going to spend quite a bit to do it, and so we'll, in fact, only be locking in maybe $1.42 or $1.43. But we have enough return in some of these budgets, which is kind of rare, that you can actually do something and not give away everything, which is the normal case. What I did today... We just did in my office with a few little tools. I used the cow bites ration formulator. Some of you have it, or you can go see people like myself or extension agents and, and throw some numbers in there to see what will make a, a ration uh, look like it'll make cattle perform the way you want. But there's a thing on the web called Calf Web. Google it, and that's a little break-even calculator that lets you punch some numbers. You can go to the CME website, and you can get your futures and option quotes. You can go to Tim Petrie's page, NDSU Livestock Economics. You can get his uh, budget spreadsheet, or you can get those market reports pulled off directly from there. So uh, I know it won't stay the same. Tonight looks probably as good as it might look all fall, but it does look like backgrounding certain classes of cattle, certain management styles, 
can give you a pretty good return.